Hey, welcome to my garden. It is the end of May and I figured it's time for an update, a full garden tour. I'll be doing two tours because I've got two different gardens. This is what I call my main garden, my lower garden. In my lower garden, things have changed a lot since my last full garden tour earlier in the month. I've made some new additions, namely, if you followed me, uh, I've started a rose alley here. Um, that was just kind of a whim and an inspiration. I do a lot of flowers on the outside of my garden as well as on the inside of my garden. A lot of flowers and a lot of herbs. So you see down below, I have some uh, Gerber daisies, marigolds, and a passion vine growing up on the one side of my hops arch. I do flowers for a lot of reasons, but mainly because, well, there are actually several reasons. One, it's beautiful, and I just want to create some place of beauty because I believe um, that making a garden is, is a creative endeavor as well as a very practical endeavor. Um, so I want something beautiful. I'm going to spend a lot of time here, and I want to be someplace lovely and beautiful. The second reason is a lot of herbs and flowers will help to attract beneficial insects and also repel other things that you don't want in your garden. It's not 100% foolproof, though. So that's the second reason. Here's an example. Everywhere I have tomato plants planted, and that some of them are outside of my garden fence and some are inside, I always plant marigolds and I always plant basil. That seems to do a pretty good job of, of keeping those tomato plants protected, although nothing really protects them against the hornworm. Mm, we'll talk about that later in the season. The flowers I grow are a combination of annuals and perennials. Um, these are some perennials. Here's an example of something I'm actually going to take out. This is Mexican tarragon, which I planted. Obviously, it grows fantastically, but I don't really think it adds much to the garden. Here's an example of one that I absolutely love. This is um, a hyssop, or a hyssop, and it's just so fragrant and lovely, and the pollinators absolutely love it. Here are my, uh, some of my Egyptian walking onions, which I've talked about in previous videos. Here's a pineapple sage that I thought was a goner when we had a little bit of a cold spell, but now it's growing great. Here's another Mexican tarragon. Loads of flowers on this corner space. I load up the flowers. I have lots of onions and garlic growing in here as well. Down the row, you can see I've got some peppers blended in. And as I said um, in my Grow As You As We Grow video for the Rested Garden uh, website, I call it confuse a critter. I just put the flowers in, the herbs in, um, the vegetables in, etc. Echinacea growing, I grew those from seed this year. And I've planted teeny tiny uh, in these little holes they haven't come up with. Things like zinnias, there's some seedlings back there, marigolds, etc. All right. So this is the all the external beds that I have created over the last uh, two years. This one in the foreground is the one that I made a video about earlier in um, earlier this year in March, where I created a new no dig garden. And uh, I have this was half a garden last year. See what I mean about the Mexican tarragon? While we're here, I'm going to show you. Here's my Ruth Stout potato bed. I uh, made a video about that a few or earlier this week some more Egyptian walking onions in all their glory and some flowers and herbs growing here. It's a little bit hard to see but I've got some blueberries growing in here. Uh, these are fairly young. The second row of blueberries are very young. I just planted them this spring and the blackberries down below. Earlier this month I moved the various uh, lavender plants that I had had planted because they just weren't thriving. And I put them in this new bed that my friend Meredith and I created. I, I brought her in <laughs> and everybody has to go to work in my garden. And I have to say, and I, I resolved not to water this almost at all, just let it retain um, the moisture there. And these lavender plants really have perked up and they're starting to grow. So I'm hoping I'll have a very successful patch of lavender and I've got some sage back there as well. So it'll be more, uh, it'll be a drier bed. And I think that's what these Mediterranean herbs like. Here's my mini patch of garlic. This is getting close to harvesting. You can see the leaves are all turning, starting to turn yellow and that is not a bad sign. That's a good sign that says, okay, um, it's gonna be time to harvest this garlic soon enough. Probably in another oh, 10 days or so. Oh my gosh, I hadn't noticed volunteer potatoes before. I don't even know where they're coming out of. Oh well, from last year. 
This is my southernmost arch, which I now have surrounded with flowers, and I've got some golden flame honeysuckle that I've planted coming up this particular side of it. Um, I have planted on the other side marigolds and zinnias. There's some monarda. So again, I use a combination of annuals and perennials, um, and I think I always will. I like the power punch that annuals give you, and I like the protective uh, nature of marigolds in a garden. Uh, and, and they're pretty, and they grow well, and what's not to like? Okay, I planted these zinnias right here, some, and these marigolds right here, just a few days ago, so they are sprouting. That's excellent. I'm hoping this area just is like this burst of color and and, uh, and blooms, bloomage. Is that a word, bloomage? Bloomage. Well, if it isn't, it should be. Okay, we're peeking inside the sweet potato pen here. I planted this earlier in the week, or actually late, mid last week, and I am seeing new growth coming on the sweet potatoes. So that is a very good sign. I just love this little pen that my son made for me so that I could grow these sweet potatoes, hopefully without interference from critters. <laughs> these are the Beauregard sweet potatoes and you can see there is new growth coming up on them, which means they're rooting and feeling fine. Inside the fence, you can see some tomato plants that I have planted, a variety of, of different plants here. The one on the end is a glacier tomato, which is supposed to be an early tomato plant. I'm anxious to see how the glacier tomato turns out. It is supposed to be a determinant, which means it grows to a certain height, um, but then continue to produce. Um, it produces its crop, but then continues to produce. I think that's really nice, and I'm looking forward to getting some early tomatoes. Here's somebody I know coming through the gate. This is skunking hour, so Otis is on his leash. Have a good walk, guys. Here is my row on the outside of the fence and the inside of my sweet peppers. I have a variety growing, uh, and uh, those plants are really taken off now, which is, is nice. And then there's Audrey. This is Audrey. Audrey is the most oddball sunflower I've ever seen in my life. Audrey is growing in a twisted fashion and Audrey is growing out flat instead of up. So we have to figure out how to get Audrey to grow up instead of out. All of my sunflowers in my garden right now are volunteers and they are hale and hearty. And Audrey, although Audrey is an interesting shape, Audrey is huge. <laughs> So I hate to sacrifice uh, Audrey. I, I'd like Audrey to stay. So I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to come up with a way to support Audrey. Everybody needs support, right? What I have not done on the outside of this um, perimeter bed of peppers, I need to plant more flowers, some marigolds and some basil along uh, here I've too. I've also planted some black-eyed Susans, some echinacea, tarragon, various things, and look at those beautiful nasturtiums. Look how beautiful this late afternoon is turning into. We finally got some rain and now the clouds are breaking and oh, it looks like the earth has just had a great breather. In my belief, I believe a garden tour should see the good, the bad, and the ugly. And there's my pile of stuff. Show me a garden without stuff and I'll show you a gardener with a staff. All right, so now we're looking in from the main gate um, into my lower garden. And it is really starting to look like a garden. I can't believe if you compare it to last spring and earlier what it looks like, but here it is. All right, here's a great example of interplanting of different uh, flowers and herbs and things uh, in the space. This is an arch. This is arch I had up last year, and right now it's got some uh, peas that I threw in at the last minute growing up. These are snow peas or sugar snaps. Um, it will later have um, probably some other beans growing up it. So what I have planted here, you can see, are the um, cucumbers. An Arkansas uh, little leaf, that's a suyu long, and that one is a Roseland white down there. It's going to climb up the outside of this um, structure. Alongside it, I have loads and loads and loads of herbs and flowers. And look, here's a calendula that's about to bloom. 
behind it is Monarda, <laughs> even a couple gladiolas that I planted a few years ago. Lots of Monarda. We've got nasturtiums growing. Lettuces that are gonna get shaded out, hopefully, by the growing cucumbers. So this will be, this um, underneath this canopy, this archway, creates a very nice shaded space, which I'm hoping will I'll be able to grow um, lots of different things. More examples of interplanting. Uh, here we have a tomato plant. These are my volunteer borage plants and a volunteer marigold. All of this is gonna grow up surrounding to support this tomato plant. The nasturtiums are helpful also to the tomato and also can be used as a trap crop um, for cucumber beetles who are going after my cucumbers. In years past, I tried to grow nasturtiums and I had absolutely no luck. Last year, I had luck. And I had luck, I think, because I put them close to climbing plants like cucumbers and beans. And um, they, they enjoyed that shaded uh, bit that they got from those plants. So I think that might be the trick. I don't know how long that they'll last through um, this summer. Summers get brutally hot here and very, very humid. But last year, I had nasturtiums um, blooming all summer and into the fall. So it was really nice. If you've never grown borage, you're missing out. The flowers are edible. The flowers are beautiful. The plant is stunning. Beneficials love it. And I have it everywhere. It's self-seeds, so I, I hardly plant it anymore. I just let it pop up where it wants to pop up. Let's go ahead and pull this carrot here. Oh, let's see what happens. Oh, ooh, that's a nice one. Very nice. And <laughs> a little baby one. I didn't need to pull that. This summer, this bed will be shard, which is already growing, and it'll be beans. These are Maxibel bush beans. I have planted, this is the first wave. I've also planted a second wave a few days ago, and you can see right here where the carrot is pointing. One is starting to emerge, so that is good. Um, the shard is really starting to come in now, um, as is the shinjim sai which is the dark green over there. It's an Asian green. This is another one of the archways that my husband and I put up this summer with my giant overwintered cilantro. What's underneath here? What's underneath here? Well, this is my brassica bed. I'll show you. This is underneath the hood, so to speak, of my brassica bed. In the foreground here, I have premier kale. Behind me, I have some sprouting broccoli. There are broccoli plants in the back and glorious red cabbages that are emerging. Last year, my brassicas really got hammered um, by the cabbage butterfly and the cabbage uh, uh, worm. And this year I was determined not to let that happen because I'd like to keep some of my kale going throughout the summer. Um, so, and also I wanted just, I, I don't want to use pesticides. So I did go ahead and I got insect netting and I put some of that over um, and it has been a total game changer in terms of keeping that white butterfly off. Later, I got hit hard by harlequin bugs and they were just nasty. Um, they were like an army of, of, you know, munching, voracious critters and they were just incessant. I was determined not to let that happen this year. So the insect netting is gonna stay on this bed as long as I have stuff in here. I've been able to harvest some beautiful broccoli and tons and tons and tons of kale. All right, coming into the lower part of my garden, um, you're looking at three bags, grow bags of potatoes. Um, they were planted in this order. Those are the purple potatoes, purple majesty potatoes that I planted in mid-March. These were planted in early April. It's a variety, different varieties. And this one was planted um, in later, later April. So hopefully I'll get three waves in these grow bags of potatoes. And you can see that they're just about to blossom. Looking, we are now looking at what I call my sauce patch. I did a video on these two. Um, I have uh, 12 Roma Virginia Select tomatoes here, uh, which should in this patch, and then three more on the end there next to the fence. That should be enough to keep me in tomato sauce for a good while. Um, these are not quite ready to tie up. These tomatoes were really quite small when I put them in. I did a video earlier on my tomato seedlings, which really I had to do a rescue operation on them because um, they just were not thriving. Um, so they were kind of stunted and behind the curve in terms of, of um, their growth, but they are definitely growing now and they're looking healthy. Um, they're still not quite ready to trellis. I'll do a Florida weave trellis on these. 
once they get a little bit more growth up on the top, I'm gonna to come through and I'm gonna start pulling these lower leaves off so that they don't touch the ground. Although I have mulch down, which really helps that the soil born uh, splashback that you really don't want on your tomatoes. Hey, over here we've got more of the Roma Select tomatoes, some lantana and a bag of carrots. Everybody needs a bag of carrots. Here is a volunteer sunflower. And here are three tomato plants. This one right here is a Jubilee. I had to replace um, another tomato that got pulled out. As we walk through Tomato Alley, here's another giant volunteer sunflower. Some lemon balm, I love lemon balm. Here are some of my uh, zucchini and yellow straight neck squash, which I have been, which I planted and is now uh, growing well as a set flower. Here's another bag of potatoes. We're now looking over from the inside at uh, Audrey and these sweet peppers. Oh, look, somebody's been digging around here too. What do you think? It really could be anything. Might be squirrels. Those pretty big footprints could be raccoon. Um, I guess a skunk could get in here. I don't know whether skunks really climb fences or not, but raccoons sure do. And uh, squirrels go wherever the heck they want. Meanwhile, would you look at these red Pontiac potatoes? Oh my, these plants look fantastic. This lemon balm on the north end is going to definitely need a trim and I think I'll come out and do that soon and make some lovely tea. Here's some more tomato plants, more volunteer sunflowers growing straight up, thankfully. And here are, here's some pea tunnel here. Now, when these peas are finished up, this is where I'm gonna put my tromboncino squash that I grew last year that was the hit of the garden. Um, on the other side, as the potatoes finish up, I will be plant, well, I've already planted uh, Ed, Edzito melons and also some Eden Gem melons um, that's, that are flowering down, down there. This is what borage looks like as it's getting ready to flower. This thing is gonna send out shoots of flowers everywhere and I just can't wait. It's gonna be full of pollinators. Um, it's just gonna be glorious. These are my happy zucchini. This is a zucchini and this is a yellow straight neck squash. These were planted at the, uh, on May 2nd and they are getting ready to start growing squash. Wind is picking up. Here are parsnips and I also have some of the Dean's purple beans here that I got from Southern Exposure. I'm hoping I can get some blue lakes growing in here. I had let's see three all of three germinate. I planted some more seeds in there yesterday that I had pre-soaked and they had sprouted so I'm hoping that I can get a few more plants coming up in there. Here's a nice little patch of dill growing. Again, more calendula growing. And here is some drunken woman lettuce. Coming up the north side after the dill, we have three more large indeterminate tomatoes. These are my large tomato plants. Um, and they are interplanted as I always do with basil. Here we go. And with marigolds as always. And finally, it looks a little pathetic, but <laughs> I didn't properly um, support these uh, sweet peas but they are, I've been harvesting them a good bit. These are definitely ready to eat. I'm gonna come in and probably pick the rest of them over the next couple of days um, and serve them with some pasta. So uh, they flopped backwards on themselves, <laughs> but that's okay. They, they grew up, they had their, their peas and there's still some more on there. So that's all good. And this lovely creature is a parsnip that is now about to bloom. It was planted last spring uh, it didn't really do much during its, its growing season. It overwintered and then continued to grow. So now it is going to bloom and I'm just gonna let it because it, um, it has these gorgeous flowers um, and the, the pollinators love them so, and beneficials. So, um, and it's a really beautiful flower. So I'll pull it when I pull the rest of the peas out after it flowers. Well, that's about it for my lower garden. Um, I'll make another tour and post it of my kitchen garden area and back back there uh, to let you know what's going on up there. This is by far my most productive uh, bed and this is a completely no-dig garden space. 
Um, this is this garden has been developed uh, since 19, uh, 1920, since 2020, I'm not that old. Since 2020, um, I planted the first things down here, just a, a couple of beds of tomatoes and some uh, way too many squash. And then um, over the next, the, the subsequent years, I have expanded it a bit and a bit each year. Um, it is my happy place and I'm happy to share it with you. So thanks for watching. Please consider liking and subscribing. And also please make comments hopefully good ones. I'd love to hear what you're growing and how your garden grows. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.